Welcome to Counter Blaster, where we issue condemnations and counterblasts against the modern world. I hope, in time, this channel can become a home for all things counter, original, spare, and strange, to quote Gerard Manley Hopkins. Like Russell Kirk before me, my mind is a gothic mind. Variety, mystery, tradition, the venerable, the awful, these are my watchwords. Skeptical of cold reason, and convinced the Enlightenment brought us to a benighted age, I cling to the old ways of prescription, prejudice, and ancestral wisdom. Like T.S. Eliot, I am a Catholic in religion, albeit one in full communion with Rome, a classicist in literature, and a royalist in politics. With the late, great Sir Roger Scruton, I affirm that our inheritance is more easily destroyed than created, nor is it our property to do with what we like. As a monarchist, I abhor the tyranny of the living, preferring to consult the deathless dead, whose collective wisdom can never be surpassed by any individual, no matter how brilliant. I seek the counsel of the dead in myth, tradition, art, word, and deed. This, I suppose, is what Chesterton meant by democracy, namely, a deep reverence for the things common to all men. Therefore, I have a preference for the folkways, the normal, and the universal, especially as manifested in the particularities of local and regional differences. Naturally, then, I prefer the Anglo-Saxon to the Norman archetype, and ill-fated, quixotic, romantic struggles capture my sympathies, whether in Harold Godwinson at Hastings or Bonnie Prince Charlie at Culloden. With Plato, I believe the will is the captain of the ship, and with Aristotle I declare that the polis is prior to the individual, and is the arena of virtue and eudaimonia. With Joseph de Maistre, I assert that society must rest upon foundations so inscrutable to reason, so impenetrable to analysis, that the very act of inquiry is rendered futile. For when anything goes from being accepted pre-rationally to being defended however vigorously by rational argumentation, then it is only one step away from being censored irrationally. I see truth and goodness as inextricably bound up with beauty, and aesthetic sensibility must be at the fore of architecture, art, and politics as a whole. Like Nicolas Gomez de Vila, whom Eric von Kunalt Ladin has very rightly called the brightest thinker on the right, I avoid the term conservative, preferring instead reactionary. For conservatism, it seems to me, is simply last generation's liberalism, and makes increasingly little sense in a time and place where there is increasingly little to conserve. In short, I am a high Tory of the old school, indeed a devotee of the Young England movement, with a strongly localist, mildly anarchic and stridently distributist outlook, and a deep debt to G.K. Chesterton, Hilaire Belloc, and J.R.R. Tolkien. Economically, I am a distributist in the Chester Belloccian school, with solidarist tendencies after the manner of Pesh. As Chesterton rightly said, the problem with capitalism is that it produces too few capitalists. And the solution to this problem is not pace communism, the abolition of private property, but rather the restoration of private property to as many families as possible. I close with Burke, whose tragic yet romantic summation of modernity I wholeheartedly agree with, and which I can hardly hope to surpass by words my own. Thus Burke. But the age of chivalry is gone. That of sophisters, economists, and calculators has succeeded.
dignified obedience, that subordination of the heart, which kept alive even in servitude itself, the spirit of an exalted freedom. The unbought grace of life, the cheap defense of nations, the nurse of manly sentiment and heroic enterprise, is gone. It is gone, that sensibility of principle, that chastity of honor which felt a stain like a wound, which inspired courage whilst it mitigated ferocity, which ennobled whatever it touched, and under which vice itself lost half its evil by losing all its grossness.